Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. In this video, we're talking all about songwriting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through my songwriting process and what I have learned, all the tips and tricks and suggestions I've learned from other people over the many years I've been writing songs. We're also going to chat with any of the folks that are here live, take your live questions, talk about your songwriting questions and suggestions. And then at the end, I'm going to give you five practical tips for how you can get writing and start writing better song. So if you're ready for that, if you're here on the live stream or if you're watching on the replay, welcome. Who am I? What are we doing here? What is all this? Well, if you're new here, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today, where my goal, my passion, my desire is to help you, yes you, create, record and release your best music. So what do I mean by your best music? Well, I mean that everyone's at different levels. we got people on this channel who are absolute beginners. we got professional songwriters and professional producers and performers who are here on the channel. So I know that there's a whole range of experience levels and I'm uh, by no means saying that I am the, the number one songwriter. But what I've done is I've learned a lot over the years from other people, so I'm going to share my knowledge, but I want this to be interactive. I want this to be two-way. If you've got questions, if you've got suggestions, if you've got tips that are going to help me write better songs and help other people here write better songs, then make sure that you throw those. If you're on the live stream, put your comments in as we go along, and we'll be, I'll be jumping over there and chatting to you folks. If you're on the replay, then there's a comment section down below. Now, I'll ask you a couple of things. If you find value in this, if you find this useful, I would love it if you share this with other folks who are maybe singer songwriters or other people creating music and if you do like it then hit the like button that's what the little thumbs up there is for it it tells me that you want to see more of these sort of live streams and live trainings and live faqs and q a's so that is what we're going to be doing here today so as i mentioned on the agenda what i like to do in these streams is i do a bit of an opening monologue so i jump in and i talk about my experiences or what i've learned so that's where i can sort of get to hopefully impart a bit of knowledge and a bit of experience and then uh, then it comes interactive. Then we jump in and then we actually jump in and I ask for questions from the folks that are here live. Plus, I what I'm actually doing today is I'm using a lot of the questions that I get in general about songwriting. So over the last sort of six months, I've been collecting up and when people ask me a song, ask me a song, ask me a question about songwriting, I'm taking a note of that and I'm saying, okay, when I do my songwriting uh, live stream, I'll be answering those questions. So that's what we'll be doing. And then at the end, as I said, I've got five additional tips and these are practical tips that I'm going to give you and things that I've used. And you know, they're not all my ideas. They're things that I've gained from other people over many years of writing, recording and releasing music that can hopefully help you get started. Because the one thing about songwriting is that, yeah, it can be difficult to get started. And sometimes you need a little bit of a spark or a little bit of a trigger or motivation to get started started. So we'll jump into that in just a moment. I'm just going to say a quick hello to the folks that we have here live at the moment. Uh, who are kind enough to join me here. So we've got <coughs> Z Minor Beats or Z Minor Beats if you're in Australia here. Benedict Stewart is here on the stream. Jeremy w Ray Williams, Ian Skeggs and the awesome Storm Plays is with us here live. So we'll jump back and we'll take your questions and I'll check back in with you as we continue on here. But let's now jump in and talk songwriting because I've got a few things that I want to talk about here about songwriting and the, the main things we're going to break down. So if you want to know what we're going going through in the next sort of 15 minutes. We're going to talk about how to start writing a song. So how do you actually get started? Uh, how do you write lyrics? So do they need to rhyme? Do they need to be a poem? Like how, how do you approach the lyric writing process if you are writing lyrics? And not all music has lyrics. So, you know, we're getting into that. Um, what is the song structure all about? So how should you structure your song? What are some options you have in your song structure? And then what is an arrangement? So what does it mean when we're arranging a song? What are some tips? What are some ways that we can make sure that our arrangement is going to be good? And then we can release that song. And we might touch a little bit at the end about what we do once we've completed that song. So once we've got our song written, how do we share it with the world? How do we get feedback? How do we get advice? Well, there's a bunch of different ways and we'll talk about all those. So let's dive in. As, as part of an introduction, when I was thinking about this first, I thought the first thing that I want to say is that uh, if you've watched some videos here, you'll realize that, or hopefully you realize that I'm 
a stickler for not saying that there are rules to anything in music. I think music is creative and I think music has options. Music has sometimes best practices, sometimes even things that work best for most people. But what it doesn't have is rules. And if you've listened to music, like I listen to a lot of music. I listen to a lot of you know rock and pop and folk and, and punk music, the sort of music I create. But I also listen to a lot of other styles of music. I listen to jazz, swing. I listen to classical. I listen to EDM. I listen to trap music. I listen to whatever is new, whatever is out there, I like to listen to for a number of reasons. One, it keeps me motivated and keeps me up to date with what's happening and what's new. But two, there's just so many different styles and you can learn so much from listening to different styles of music. And it doesn't mean that there's a rule. So there's no, when I see a video that's like, here is how to write a pop song or here is how to write a trap beat. That is not the way that is a way, one way. And what you need to do is whenever you see advice like that, and again, you're you're now taking advice from someone who's telling you how to take advice. So take that with a grain of salt. But my recommendation is that whenever you see someone that says, here's the rules, take away from whatever they say, what you want, but you don't have to listen to everything everyone says. And I've seen people get into trouble because they think the only way to write a song is to write the, the chorus first, write a hook, and then write the lyrics, and then put a verse, chorus, verse, bridge, verse, chorus, structure in place, and then arrange it in a certain way, and then really, and that, there you go, there's your song, there's your formula. I know in life sometimes we want formulas because it's easier if you've got uh, you know, instructions and A, B, C, D, but sometimes you want to go T, Q, R, Z, a. Sometimes you want to just mix things up. So that's number one. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, there's no rules, there's guidelines, best practices, structure. However, I'm now going to tell you the one secret, no, the one key thing that I've learned over however many years I've been writing songs, 20, 30 years, probably more than that. Uh, for my first, I probably wrote a song when I was like five. Everyone does create that. Oh, I have some, uh, I have some re... I have some feedback coming through here. Sorry, I'm just trying to work out where I'm playing my feedback from. Uh, just bear with me one moment while I try and isolate this feedback that's coming through. There you go. Sorry about that interruption. I was somehow playing my own live video on my phone. So yeah, I I've stopped that now because it's going to impact a few things, including my, uh, my stream here. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, amateur hour here at the moment. So what I was saying though, is that variety is the biggest thing that you need to keep in mind. So when you are writing a song, yes, you want to engage because unless you're writing music just for yourself and hey, if you are, that's great. No problem, more power to you. But if you are creating a song that you hope other people will listen to and enjoy, variety is super important because it is very easy to get into a structure, especially today with loop based and section based and on the grid and copy paste. It's really easy to create really boring songs. And I say this as someone who's created a lot of really boring songs. Like I'm first to admit that. And the problem is that what you do is you write a chorus and then you're like, okay, I need a verse to stick in front of this. And you're like, all right, I need an intro. Well, I'll just borrow my arrangement from my chorus and put that as the intro. Uh, okay, now I need a second verse. Well, let's copy and paste that. And just sing some different lyrics. Now I need a second chorus. Well, hey, I've already got this first chorus. I'll copy and paste that in. What you end up with there is just a song that is going to be long and someone will get about one minute in and they'll say, um, this song doesn't feel like it's doing anything different. <clears throat> now, does that mean that you need to be drastically changing everything in every verse and every chorus? No, but it does mean that you need to work on making sure that you have interest, you generate interest with the listener and you create variety. So they're some of the things that we'll be talking about as we go along here. So let's talk about starting. So how do you start out? How do you write a song? How do you start writing a song? Well, this is going to be some pretty simple and boring advice, but the best way to start writing a song is to start writing a song. Um, and I've got a bit of a motto that I have around here, which is when you don't know where to start, just start. So getting started is the important part. What you do is not. So in terms of how I start, do I start with lyrics? Do I start with words? They're the same thing. Do I start with uh, music? Do I start with a melody line? Do I start with harmony? Do I start with a chord progression? Well, the answer to all of those questions is yes, I do. Because different songs have different ideas. So my main way is that what I do when I'm writing a song usually is I grab a guitar like this and I get a chord progression. So my current song is based around, is based around a chord progression that does this. 
Mm. And I, I had no idea what this song was going to be about. I had no idea of the lyrics. But then uh, another time, well, not another time, but part of that same song is I had an idea um, for a, a lyric, like a hook that was going to go, Don't take all of my time. I don't have much left to give. So that was literally all I had at the start of that song is I had a chord progression, a two chord chord progression, and then I had that four chord chorus or hook part. And the rest sort of grew out of that. So they were two things that I had recorded on my voice recorder that I had that I could go back and have a look at. And I'm like, oh, th- these are interesting. Um, I wonder if they'll work well together. They were in the same key. And then I built a song around that. So that's one way. In other songs, I've had a different approach. So I've had um, songs where (laughs) there's a song I wrote called College, or There's No Such Thing As College, where all I had in my head was this thing that was going around, which is, there's no such thing as college. There's no such thing as college. That was all I had. So this is an example of no idea of the chord progression, no idea of the music. I just wanted to write a song that had that line in it. And then out of that, I built out and I literally wrote out the words first for that one. So I wrote out this whole premise of how, you know, there's no such thing as college and how college in American movies is all this fantasy stuff that uh, that I'd always you know, thought growing up was was not real. So why don't I write a song about that? So that's a, a, an example of where the lyrics can come first. What other folks can do is they can write out an entire arrangement, an entire piece of music. And by the way, a technically, a, an instrumental song is not a song, it's a piece of music. A song, by definition, has lyrics, but again, let's not get too pedantic about that. But if you're writing a song and you've written an entire instrumental piece, you may have everything completely done, and then you go ahead and you add lyrics to it. So... I kind of did that in my song, For the Birds. I had most of the instrumental done and all I had was that one line, it's for the birds, it's for the birds. Like that, that was it again. Um, So sometimes you've got just a little tiny hook, but the rest of it, you're going to build out. And then what I did with that one is I sat down one day and went, okay, I need lyrics for this. I'm going to listen to the song and I'm going to create the lyrics. I'm going to write the lyrics. So what what I'm basically saying here is it doesn't matter where you start. I, have, I need to sneeze. Sorry, if, if I sneeze in a minute, I'll try and put the volume down so you don't have to listen to that. Um, what I'm saying is it doesn't matter where you start as long as you get started. But variety is the biggest tip there in terms of when you do get started and when you are starting to write your song, think early in terms of what you're going to do differently and what you're going to actually change as part of your song. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to song structure and arranging a song, but just keep that variety front and center. Like don't, don't freak out about it. Don't go, ah, but if it's boring, if you, if you start boring, you can add or subtract. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Doesn't always, more is not always more. Sometimes less is more. We'll, we'll get onto that in a moment. Number two. So how do you write lyrics? Do they need to rhyme? Does it need to be a poem? Do you need to be an expert in different uh, A, B, B, A, rhyming, all that sort of jazz that you learn in in high school in uh, in poetry class? No, you don't. Uh, Again, there's no rules. I know some great songs that rhyme and that have beautiful sentence structure and amazing words. And then there's the Red Hot Chili Peppers. (laughs) Ning, nang, nong, nong, ning, nang, nong, nong, ning, nang. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it doesn't matter. Like lyrics, uh, lyrics can be important. They can be a pivotal central part of uh, the song. They can be the soul and the lifeblood of the song, or they can serve a purpose to sit around a really cool beat or a really cool melodic or harmonious arrangement. Either way, start writing. Yeah, you know there's going to be a theme here. Just start writing. So whilst I said before, I usually start with a hook. So I usually start with something that's either going to be the premise of the song, and it's not necessarily the chorus. Sometimes it's the chorus or sometimes it's the the verse. So sometimes it's the melody of the verse that's just in my head, and then I work on the chorus at a later stage. So I've done that with other songs like, um, yeah, the song I did called Be Cool, which is where I had this sort of swing rhythm where I was like, well, there's just one thing that you should know about me, and that's that I don't like people who don't like people too much. So I literally just had that, and that it's like that real swing rhythm. And then I'm like, what am I doing the chorus of this? Like, what's this song even about? And I'm like, oh, it's really about being cool. So I'm like, oh, maybe I just go be cool to everybody, you know. So that's where that came about from starting with the verse. And sometimes you can actually do that. Sometimes you start with the chorus. Sometimes you start with a concept. Now, in terms of what you actually want to do, how do you, how do you work out what you're writing about? Yeah. So what are some tips here? Well, a lot of songs are about 
characters, about people. Like the vast majority, I was, I was thinking about this beforehand. I was trying to come up with examples. So um, most songs that are written are about a story about a person or people in general. There's usually characters in a song. If you think of all the songs, like uh, um, what, what I was thinking, it's like, um, I would do anything for love. It's like, I would do anything. I want to rock and roll all night and party every day. Um, drove my Chevy to the levee. Bye bye, Miss American Pie. We're talking about people. So most of them are sort of about people. And most are from the angle of a person. So a person looking outwardly. So it's uh, I, and then it's that person's experience. So a lot of sort of autobiographical songs. Some are third person. So some are where you're sort of looking and you're talking about other people and what they're actually doing. So an uh, example of that, there's a cool Ben Fold song called Zach and Sarah, where he's just sort of like, Sarah spelled without an H was getting bored on a PV amp in 1984. So he's telling a story. While Zach without a C tried out some new guitars. So he's talking about two different people and he's telling the story from above, basically like third person thing, looking down upon this scene. So that's one option. Think about a character in a situation and it's a bit like creative writing class. Like if you did this in school, creative writing, they would say, think about a person. I do this with my kids. I'm like, if, if I want to sort of get their brain away from screens and games and things, I'm like, okay, let, let's play the three, you know, three question scenario game. So what I'll say is if there's three people, one person comes up with, a person, so a character, one person comes up with a place and one person comes up with a thing that they're doing. So it could be uh, a rhinoceros and he's going to the zoo and he's going to buy a penguin. Bad example, but you get the drift. So you, you're thinking about a character and in songwriting, it's very similar to that, but you might be thinking, here's a character. I've got to turn my notifications off. Here's a character. What what are they actually doing? Like, what are, what is their problem? What are they trying to get done? And then what is the story that I want to tell here? Or it could be, it couldn't necessarily be an end-to-end -end story. It could be about a feeling. So it could be, I have this strong feeling about this topic or this issue. So it really boils down to, you're telling a story about a person going through a thing, you're telling a story about a thing, which could just be the topic, it's always going to kind of revolve around a noun. There kind of has to be a meaning or, you know what, you can break all of those rules and go, I'm going to write whatever. I'm just going to write a random rant of thoughts and you can write a song like um, like Billy Joel, well, Billy Joel, We Didn't Start the Fire. It's a bunch of different sort of sentences that all sort of work together, but there's, you know, there's some songs like um, Nothing Ever Happens by Della Mitri where it's just, again, it's just a bunch of observations about various different people, but the whole sort of premise is that nothing ever happens, things always stay the same, the music returns to the start of the song and we all sing along like before. So Sorry, I'm in a singing mood today. I'll, I'll stop that because it's probably getting annoying. So how do you write lyrics? Well, again, there's some, there's some ideas, not some rules, but some ideas that might actually help you. Think about a person, think about a scenario, think about a noun, or think about a topic. Think about something that you're passionate about. It doesn't matter. If you like skateboarding, write a song about skateboarding. There's a great song uh, by OPM called Heaven is a Half Pipe, which is just, if I die before I wake, at least in heaven I can skate. Um, so yeah, it's just about... Yeah, hey, I like skateboarding, right about skateboarding. Uh, and I broke my rule, I started singing again. All right, you can tell I'm getting passionate because I'm starting to talk faster. So I'm going hit to the, hit the slow me down button so that folks can actually hear what I'm saying. And we're going to start talking because we are already 18 minutes in. Let's talk about structure. So what is song structure? Well, let's, we're not going to get into a giant because I could probably spend an hour talking about all the different song structure elements that you can do. But in its basic form, you're talking about how you actually put your song together. So songs usually come in sections or parts, and we call those things like verse, things like chorus, things like introduction or intro, things like outro or bridges and coders. So that all these words, what do they mean? Well, they're just different parts of the song. So your, your classical standard song structure, you're starting with some sort of intro. So you got, you know, we're going to start a song. Very few songs just go, blah, 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 and they just jump into a chorus. Some do, and we'll talk about that a bit later. But most of them have some sort of intro, and then they'll go into usually a verse type structure, or this is sort of your, your base of your song. And I know I'm talking, when I talk songwriting, I'm probably talking more rock, uh, pop, punk, uh, folk, songs that have lyrics and that follow this structure. If you're into EDM, if you're into beats, if you're into hip hop, if you're into other terms of types of music, the structure may vary slightly, but a lot of the pr principles and premises are going to be very similar. And that is variety, that is structure, that is keeping interest. So keep, keep listening because uh, even if you're not into these genres of music, I think there'll be something interesting for you. So the standard structure, verse, chorus, verse, 
uh, usually what you'd have, so it's classic songs, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, or bridge, back to verse, back to chorus. It really depends on the length of the song. But if you think like four minute pop song, think of your favorite pop song. It's usually, here's an intro, here's a verse, here's a chorus, here's a verse, here's a second chorus. Now we go off into a bridge, which is usually a change in like the key or a change in the chord structure or a change in the feeling. Again, variety. And then we come usually back to familiarity, but sort of a big final verse or a big, and then a big final chorus. So most of your songs are actually a crescendo. So when you think of song structure, think in terms of going up a hill. So if you're starting out like this, and again, this is changing, and we'll talk about why it's changing, but classically, your song would start out quiet, would have an intro. Think of your old guitar-driven rock. Like that sort of thing. I think Rolling Stones, think Beatles, think classic rock, Led Zeppelin. They usually have like a long one. In case of Led Zepp, like you know, Pink Floyd, sometimes they'd have like a two-minute guitar intro. Don't do that anymore. Maybe not because, uh, yeah, you've got to be really good guitarist. You've got to be like Robert Plant, Jimmy Page, these guys to be able to do that. Um, but yeah, most songs start slow and then they'll ramp up. And what they should actually do is crescendo at the end. So your final chorus, the, the finish of your song should be usually where things are the loudest, the densest, the most instrumentation, the most complexity. Not always the case. Again, we're talking about the basics here. So if you follow that flow, then you go you've got an intro, you got your verse, which is sort of minimalist, and then you got your chorus. Your first chorus kicks it up a bit. Your second verse is like your first verse, but it has to introduce, well, my recommendation is that it introduces another element or another component. So introduce something else in your second verse so that it complements, so that it doesn't just sound, it's not a cookie cutter, cut and paste version of your first verse. It has the same elements for familiarity, but it's not exactly the same. It's not just doing the same things. And then you should be building to most songs. And again, genre will be dependent, but most songs should finish strong. If someone's been listening for three, four minutes to your song, you don't want it to go out with like a boo. You want it to go out. And again, variations to this where things might want to slow right down and finish really quietly. Like I'm thinking like Fix You by Coldplay. Right at the end, it's like, and then it's just got that nice little quiet bit at the end. Well, sometimes songs do that because you, your crescendo is like, you know, 30 seconds before the end and then you kind of just tail off. But there should be some sort of crescendo at some point. Things should peak and should reach that point at some point in your song. So structure, it is important. You can study it. You can do whatever you want with it. Basic understanding of it, though, is to make sure that you have variety through it, to make sure that generally you're ramping up. And again, I did mention before that some songs these days, think Foo Fighters. So Foo Fighters have a lot of songs and if a lot of electronic music these days. It starts up here, it, in the middle it's up here, and it ends up here. And on the surface, you might think, well, Dave Grohl doesn't do that. Dave Grohl's just like, bang, I'm going to start really hard and then I'm just going to go straight through. But it's not actually true. If you listen, there's subtleties, but there's changes. So the first verse of a Foo Fighters song is never going to sound exactly the same as the second verse. They'll add an extra guitar or they'll add in an extra instrument or they'll change up the drum beat or they'll double or triple Dave's vocals. Dave uses a lot of that sort of arrangement where he'll actually add in additional vocals. That's so another tip you can use is if your second verse needs to, you want it to sound thicker and more punchy. Say you've recorded vocals for your first verse. In your second verse, double your vocal. And all doubling vocals means is recording a second take of your vocal and then putting that at a lower volume underneath your first one. It creates it and makes it sound thicker, makes it sound more present because you've got those two. And it can actually, here's a tip, it can actually help you with your pitch. So if you're off your note, then doubling your vocal can actually help. So there's a little bit about structure. We're going to talk about arrangement and then I'm jumping back in to chat to the folks here live. So quick drink. But I really hope you're getting some value from this. Again, this is one person, I can't stress enough, this is one person's opinion. But what I want you to get out of this is I want you to start thinking about these things and these concepts and these topics and how are they impacting your songwriting? So what can you take away and do differently, do the same? Are you right on the right track? Are there some ideas here that are going to help you? So if you're getting value out of this, I'd love you to hit the like button and that will tell me that I should do more of these sort of videos. Let's talk about arrangement. And we've covered a lot of this already, but when you're arranging, a song, it's basically like your song structure, but now you're bringing in the different instrumentation, the different decisions you're making, things I talked about before around doubling, adding additional guitars, do you add in a piano in the second verse, do you add in strings, and we're super lucky right now, because there was a time where, if you wanted to add in, like, I, I'm writing a song at the moment, and I just added in an electric piano, so I just went, oh, this song really could use an electric piano, in fact, I'll give you a bit of a listen to it, so I was, I was sitting here before going, this song's okay, 
But the, the arrangement, especially at the start here, is a little bit empty. So what I did, here's the electric piano sound just by itself. So it's really soft and subtle. So it just needed this as a bit of a pad. Let, let's bring it back into the track. So once you bring it back into the track, you can barely hear it, yeah? Like it's, but it, it's part of that arrangement decision. So he, here's my approach to arranging a song. And this will vary again for everyone. I like to start with the basics. So like here's the structure. And I'll, I will generally have an instrument that carries the song. For me, it's usually acoustic guitar, but not always. Sometimes it's piano, sometimes it's other things. So that's kind of my all the way instrument. It may stop for little sections if I need like a little break from it, somewhere in a bridge or something, but it'll sort of carry me through. And then what I do is I start building out on that. And this is where I say like less is more because what a lot of folks will do is when they write a song, they, they think of arranging and they're like, I'm going to make this super interesting. So what do they do? They write their first verse and they go horns, strings, electric piano, piano, guitars, bass, everything. They just cram it all in there. And then they get to their second verse and they're like, oh no, what do I do now? I've already got this really full mix. How do I actually add to that? Whereas the correct question may be, what do I take away from the first part to make the second part stand out? So that's where I say, don't always think more is more. Sometimes less is more. Sometimes removing things can actually have a good effect on your arrangement. It's the same with, with things like your chorus. In your first chorus, and I hear this with like rock bands and punk bands. They're like, okay, we're getting to the chorus. We're getting to the chorus. You kick your distortion pedal. You slam it down. The drummer's going nuts. And you're like, yay, first chorus. And then and they do the second verse and then they're like second chorus <laughs> like a you're exhausted and b it's the same like it's exactly the same as your first chorus so sometimes you need to leave a little bit in reserve you need to leave something in the bank so that when you go you can cash in on that second chorus and bring that crescendo so don't always when you're looking at arrangement Yes, less can be more. Uh, what else have I got in my notes here? So yes, it's, it's as much about what you leave out as what you actually leave in, but variation is the key. Did, you, did I tell you that yet? Have I said that? Variation is the key. Yeah, you want to vary things up. Now, here I'm just going to pause to say, the reason variety is increasingly important. The reason that I mentioned before, older rock songs had really long intros. So they went, they could have had a one minute, minute and a half, two minute intro before they actually get into the first verse. Why don't we hear that anymore? It's attention span. It's the Spotify. It's the streaming. It's the fact that people don't have the attention spans. And it's not a necessarily a negative thing. It's just a reality thing. So the reason is, you know, social media. Um, yeah, people have their smartphones. If, if a song comes on and you're just hearing the same, like think about uh, Rolling Stones. Yeah, I can't get, no. Like that's probably about as long as you'd want any intro because if they sort of got into some sort of blues funk jam there and it took a minute before, before, um, Mick, I was going to say Keith, no, that's a, that's the guitarist. Before Mick Jagger starts singing, then you're going to be like, uh, no, I'll, I'll switch off now. Uh, but songs these days, it's almost instantaneous. Like if the lyrics haven't started within 10 seconds of a song, it's quite surprising now. And quite often, it'll almost just be like, Brum, da, 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 da. They'll, they'll just start singing, they'll start playing, it will just kick in straight away. So the reason for that is that people have shorter attention spans. So when you're looking at your arrangement, I tend to stick to, I used to do eight bars, 16 bars for an intro. Rarely is an intro more than four bars for me now. Like my, my current song has an eight bar intro before the lyrics kick in. And I'm almost thinking it's a bit too long. Like let's take, take a listen to this and let me know what you think. Is this too long for an intro? So here's my uh, little quiet intro with my guitars. So we're at the, the four bar mark. Uh, are, are you skipping yet? Not much is changing yet. Maybe I need to introduce something a bit different. Where are those lyrics? They're coming. Here. Yeah. The smell of frustration. So yeah, to me, that is the longest that you would want something. And and I've I've started other songs much, much quicker than that. But yeah, again, it's it's an artistic decision. And if you do want a longer one, then that's absolutely fine. But just keep in mind that 
if your depends on your goal. If your goal is to create a piece of music that you're going to be proud of, that's going to be exactly what you want it to be, great. One minute long guitar solo for your intro, that's fine. If you want something that's going to translate and that's going to be listened to and that's going to be enjoyed by a lot of people, then you do need to make some of those sacrifices, which is get to the hook. Yeah, you've heard that before, yeah? Get to the hook as quickly as you can because that is what people are going to have in their head. That's what's going to be rolling around for the rest of the day when they listen to a great track. So there you are. We are at the halfway point. So we've done well here. Um, Like I said, hopefully that was interesting and gave you a little bit of value. But now what I'm going to do, we're going to return and we're going to start chatting to the folks that we have here in the live stream. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top of the chat and we're going to take some questions here now once again if you are on the replay here no problems whatsoever you can add your comments and i will always get back to them i reply to every single comment that comes in here or at least i try my very best to reply within a day to get back to you but the other good thing is we've got a whole heap of great folks here in the community that will also be able to answer questions and help you out as well so let's take a quick look here so storm plays a popular theme is to take a chorus or part of an old song and integrating it into their song. Some examples, Centuries, Fall Out Boy, Stan, Eminem. Yeah, exactly. So sometimes your, your hook can be something that you sort of pick up from somewhere else. Like I love Stan, the hook in Stan with Dido singing. That's a really good example. So great, great stuff there. Uh, hello to a few more folks we have here. Good midnight to you from Earthling. Yes, I know it's very late for you folks over in the UK and Europe. And you've just had your uh, daylight savings too. So uh, yes, hello to you. Hello, Jesus, Ramos, Valencia. G'day to you. Darren Bryan. Right. Hello, Ian Skeggs. Uh, blank canvas with your own input. Uh, yep, yeah, sometimes uh, songwriting, having a blank canvas with your own input is the way to do it. Hello, Leslie Cortez. Hello, Knights of Seth. Hello to you too. Benedict Stewart says, I write songs from my personal experience and listen to a variety of music for inspiration. Yeah, and this is a this is a key point. <laughs> um, it, it's funny. Uh, uh, Eddie Murphy does a comedy bit where he talks about, you know, but when he was a kid, he could only do like toilet humor because that's all he knew. Like he hadn't experienced anything yet. Um, and then as he grew up, he could start doing comedy about other things. And it's kind of the same with songwriting um if you spend if you spend all your time just writing songs and not living you're not going to have experiences to draw back on so it can be hard to know what to write about but that's when you you know you add characters you talk about other people like not all of my songs are my direct experiences a lot of them have influences from that and are sort of messages that I want to put out there but and, and I say this a lot um if you listen to a lot of my songs then you'd think oh man this guy's got some serious problems because if you think I'm the main character in all of my songs I'm a messed up dude. Like I'm a, I'm a struggling individual, but uh, whilst some of those are autobiographical are about me, a lot of them are actually just reflections and sort of composite characters. Um, it's kind of like that movie thing. Like yeah, people may, what is that? May represent other people, but no, not based on anyone actually true life. So that's kind of the way I approach it. So, but yeah, personal life experience, very important. I need to find a way that I can drink, but still talk drink through like the people anyway um so thanks for that benedict uh ian skegg says i i've had stuff into my head just before i woke up guess what i couldn't remember it when i got up don't you hate that so yes i have the same thing and this this is a really good point and um, okay i was going to put this in my tips but i'll have to think of another tip to add to this but I was actually watching a live stream from uh, Samantha Edge, who's ec- excellent, by the way. You should uh, go, go Google. I'll put her in the description. Um, Samantha Edge, she's a busker here in Adelaide, and she's a fantastic piano uh, vocalist, singer, songwriter, uh, does a great job. But she actually mentioned that her, her phone, the voice recorder on her phone is like her best songwriting tool. And I couldn't agree more. Like, I don't know what we did before we could do that, before we could quickly and easily capture music and songs and song ideas using our phones or using an audio recorder, I don't know how we actually remembered what we wrote. You'd have to write it down and quickly write the chords and quickly write the lyrics like, yeah, or get a cassette, like, you know, one of those old dictaphones and, and record on that. I, I had a I had a little boom box, so I'd have a blank tape and I'd have to hit record on the boom box and like be playing frantically before I forget it. So yeah, have, have some, if you've got a smartphone, most of you do, or a tablet, make sure it's nearby, throw your camera app on. If, you, if you're just scrambling, just like, camera app on, 
record audio, get idea down. Uh, and it does happen at the weirdest times. Like I, I come out of the shower and I have to run to my phone. Don't, don't visualize that, but you know what I mean? Uh, people wake up first thing in the morning, as, as Ian said, they've got an idea. They need to get to something to record it. I've woken up in the middle of the night before and I've had to reach over and I've had to very quietly whisper a song idea into my phone because I didn't want to wake up the, the household by trying to you know, sing it out. So yeah, be able to be able to capture your songs is a good idea. Um, uh, and Earthlings agreeing that it's, it's annoying. It's, yeah, it's, it's when your subconscious kicks in is what Earthlings saying. Then it's, it's all forgotten. That's the way it goes. Uh, Dada Drew, thanks for this, Pete. Thanks to you for spending the time here. Uh, I've got a question from Jeremy Ray Williams. How do I go from riff or chord progression to a full song? What a brilliant question. This is probably the biggest question that I get, which is I got a riff, I got a chorus, I got a, I got 16 bars. How do I turn that into a complete song? And yeah, I know you, you probably want an easier answer. There's no easy answer, which is probably why you're asking the question because it is a struggle. What I tend to do is I try to, because acoustic guitar is my instrument of choice, I force myself to complete the song. And I make it an absolute note to make it as crappy as I can. Well, not deliberately, but sometimes, yeah, sometimes deliberately. We'll get to that later. But don't be afraid. Like, get it written out. If you're not happy that the chorus progression sounds right or you don't think the intro sounds right, you'll be amazed at how just getting it done and going, okay, there it is on the page. There's my chord structure. So you might have, if you saw a video I did a couple ago where I, did song a similar sort of thing, but I actually did songwriting. And let's see if I can find the notes that I did here. So I wanted to get this song written and I wanted to get the structure down. So I actually jumped in to my notes here and just started doing all of this. So let me bring it up and show in case you didn't get along to that one. So here's what I had. Um, so at the time I, I, I had the lyrics written out like this and I needed to get the structure down. So I kind of came in here and said, okay, here's my lead in. My intro is going to be this. I'm then going to go verse, pre-chorus, chorus, interlude, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, the final chorus and outro. And this one actually stuck. So this is 96 bars in total. I've set up my structure in GarageBand. I've recorded it and it's working well. But this is what I generally tend to do because as you said there, Jeremy, I had the same problem. I would come in and I'd start writing and I'd end up with a bunch of 30 second songs is this resonating with anyone do you, do you do you folks have the same problem where you go into your ideas and they're all like 30 seconds and you're like is there an entire song in this whole bunch like i got 10 30 second snippets and riffs where's my whole song at so yeah take one of those and just sit down and do not move or do not stop until you have it written in a song structure if it sucks great move on and try another one don't worry about it if if it's not quite there no problem. You'll workshop it. You'll get it better. But the hardest part is taking riff to completed song. So if you can at least get the structure in some sort of order that can change, we're in the digital world. Don't worry. If it's going to change, it'll change. But get something down because that's the gateway between riff and completed song. So hopefully, hopefully that helps out. That's that's one way to do it. Again, that's my way. It's the way that works for me. And as soon as I took that leap from just doing noodling on things and getting things down right over to no I'm actually just going to get things done now that's where my I started completing songs because I, I hadn't fit, I hadn't released a song three years ago I hadn't re released a single song now I've released uh, two EPs an album and about seven singles in three years just because I've changed that one thing I've got instead of writing riffs I'm going to write songs so a lot of it's a, a mental approach and, and a way to address it. But great question. Thank you for that. Uh, and don't overthink about writing, says Ian Skeggs. Yes, great point. Don't overthink it. Get stuff down. And this is the big problem. Because we're so we're in this social media environment, we're in this world now where everything is shared, we think because of the perception we get from other people, and you might see it from me, hopefully what you see on this channel is I show you it warts and all. I show you the mistakes, I show you the bad songs, I show you when an arrangement is crappy and I need to fix it. Because sometimes you see, like if you're watching some, and again, I'm not going to say it's a bad thing, because this is what people want. Like everything is like really slick production and everything comes together. It looks like some people can just, you know, wake up in the morning, write a song and release it. And, oh, isn't it grand? But it doesn't work that way. Sometimes 
it's crap. Like some, uh, uh, you might have seen, like you, you saw just before. Did you see all those things down the side? They're all the ideas I've had. Now I've had a lot more ideas than I have completed songs because some of them don't go anywhere. But you know what? You go, hmm, that was a bad idea. I'm going to start a new one, and you go to the next one. So yeah, don't lose hope, and don't don't focus too much on people that look like they are super successful and making it look easy because <clears throat> there's there's editing in video, and we can make things look a lot easier than they actually are. So keep that in mind. Hello. Gino Therese from Chicago. How are you today, sir? Great to have you here. Um, do, 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 do. Coming down here, uh, Ian Skeg's one note melody that just entered my mind. Oh, cool. I hope you uh, I hope you wrote it down. Um, Jeremy Way Williams. Uh, yep, we're just chatting here. The Loudness Wars. Yeah, we didn't we didn't talk much about the Loudness Wars. That was probably when I was ranting. I, I should have come back and chatted here. But yeah, the the whole the Loudness Wars is basically uh, what what has driven and what has generated a lot of the music today, which is that louder is better. So it kind of came about from where uh, basically the the human ear when it hears something louder, it basically sounds better. So there's been experiments done where uh, Ian, Ian Shepard, who's a mastering engineer, did an experiment where he played a song and then he said, okay, here's the unmastered version. And then he played another song and said, okay, here's my, here's my mastered version. And he said, you know, what sounds better about it? And people were saying, oh, the, the clarity was better. I, I heard a boost at, at 2K that really brought out the guitar sound, a lot of this sort of stuff. And he said, you know what I did? I turned it up one decibel. Like one dB, I turned it up by, and that was the only change. Yet people that heard it slightly louder thought it was good because our ears are designed that way. They hear things louder, they think they're better. Unfortunately, where we're at now is an extreme level of that where there's this loudness war where it's like, well, if my song is louder than yours, then surely it's better. But you know what? Diminishing returns. Once you hit that ceiling and it's just, I call it the sausage waveform where you just got that bleep straight across, no dynamic range. Yeah. It, I don't like it. A lot of people don't like it. There's a bit of a revolution trying to happen around this whole loudness wars. But again, if, if you like loud music and you want to produce your music loud, more power to you. You're like most producers. <laughs> um, so Gino Therese, study music theory. It's a godsend for songwriting. You know the rules and how to break them. That is a great point. Um, so studying studying uh, music theory, and, and I have a moderate knowledge of music theory, it does actually help. And I want to learn more theory. So I'm, I'm going to go on a bit of a journey to actually learn a bit more about music theory because it does help. Like, yeah, you can just sort of bash out of chord progression, but if you happen to know, and Dan Baker, who's got a great YouTube channel, talks about this a lot. Um, yeah, if you know a little bit about music theory even, or if you've just learned some of the things from, from him on YouTube here, then yeah, it can really help you. It can help with your songwriting. So great question. Um, a question for everyone from Storm Plays. What song could I take the chorus from? I've been heavily inspired by Stan. Uh, so we talked about that before. <coughs> so some ideas there. Um, yeah, n nothing stopping you. Again, you're writing a song, especially when you're learning and you're practicing. Nothing wrong with sampling. And especially if you're not going to release it. Like, yeah, sample to your heart's content. Be be uh, be what you want. Um, do, 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 do. And please, please don't pander to what you think people want to hear, says Ian Skeggs. Yeah, a, a good point. And that's why I made the, the clarification there to say, think about the intention. So think about what you actually want from your music. Um, because, yeah, you don't want... If I, It's a good point, because if I was going to pander, I wouldn't be writing and recording the music that I'm recording. Like, my music appeals to a certain demographic of folks, and it really doesn't appeal to a lot of other people. I would be making trap beats, or I would be making future bass if I really wanted to appeal to the most number of people right now. But I like to make the music I make. What, doesn't, what that doesn't mean is that I shouldn't think about it being interesting. So I, I still don't want to make a song. But again, if I make a boring song, I get bored by it too. So, and if you're listening to your own song and by the time you finish recording that you're so bored with it, you think, oh, I'm, I'm just over this now. It's a pretty good indication that perhaps it's not going to hold interest for others as well. And when you go back and listen to it, you may not be interested as well. So yeah, good point there. Uh, Lucas Brack said, not a question, but just wanted to thank you for doing great videos. Well, thank you. If, uh, if it wasn't for you folks watching them, uh, I, I stay, I'd probably still do them because I just have fun doing them, but uh, it's, it's good to have you here. Uh, Valium FM, hello to you. I only just got here. Any news on the goats album? <laughs> so Valium, uh, bought a copy of my single goats. Thank you. A good, good segue into talking about this. Uh, uh so my, my fictional punk band Fear Cut, uh, recorded the single goats. They've then covered the classic final countdown tune and did an acoustic version, but the room 
rumour is that Fear cut it back in the studio working on a punk album or potentially a punk EP just for a bit of fun. So, yeah, uh, watch watch that space. And, and uh, Valiant wants more Goats-related um, uh, songs. So we'll see how we go. Rob Harley, hello to you. Great to see you. Thank you for your kind words. Uh, Cookie Montage, hello to you as well. Um, We've got some other folks chatting here. Uh, so Rob Harley says, I used to be homeless, so I write a lot from that point of view that's a, of a drifter. Well, that's really interesting. So yeah, as I said, if you've got if you've got experiences and you've got life history, not that being homeless, and I'm glad that you uh, are not that anymore, but um, yeah, not to say that that's... But again, it, it's not always your good things. I mean, how many songs are, you, are written about all the positive things? I mean, yeah, old Beatles stuff, She Loves Me, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty, pretty happy, but a lot of stuff is written about heartache. It's written about coming through tragedy it's written about challenges and overcoming challenges so yes definitely a good thing to have there um mini hogard how are you mini great to see you on board here um we've got other questions so jeremy ray williams says thank you for uh, the answer it helps a lot uh data drew do you use other apps or template in word docs for lyrics and song structure and how about your project folders with all the different bits and versions Oh, yeah. Uh, two really good questions. And oh, and thank you for the super chat too. So uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate that. I don't usually promote that too much because I feel a bit weird. You folks are already giving up your time and you're watching this this video. Uh, but yeah, if, if, if anyone does want to donate um, and help the, help the channel out here, there is a little super chat button, the little dollar sign by the smiley face. So you can smile at me and then you can hit the dollar sign as Dada Drew did. So I do really appreciate that. Thank you heaps. Um, so do I use other apps uh, or template in Word Docs? So I tend to not, you, I showed you before in my OneNote uh, what I actually use for my, the way I put song structures together. So let's have a quick explore because this is going to be related. So let me take you back into my songwriting folder and you'll see that it's it, it varies. So here is what I did for Goats, the song I was just talking about there with Valium FM. So sometimes I'll write out a structure like this. It's usually I'll have a heading and then I'll have the number of bars and then what I'm playing in here. And then in things like this, the intro and then the lead guitar and Sometimes I'll write it out like this. So if it's a chord progression, I'll write the chord progressions out like this. I'll leave notes in here for myself. So you can see there, hang out on the B and then slide down. So that was some instructions there for myself. Um, and then I'll have my lyrics down here below. Now, when I sort of put it together, yeah, this one's a bad example because it's pretty messy. Let's jump back to a previous song. So here's six and eight. Yeah, so here's another example. Here's one where I actually used a template that I've used before. So because I use GarageBand, what I do sometimes is use this sort of template. Um, and maybe maybe this is something that I should create. If, if you're interested, let me know. Maybe uh, maybe I'll create some of these to, to help folks. If you can have your own Word or your own OneNote template for these. But here you can see I've got the A, B, C, D, which are all of my GarageBand um, section, num section letters as my headers. And then I've got what it is. And then I've got the chord progression under each of those. So that's, that's how I tend to approach putting my song structure together. And then I've got the lyrics down here separately. So sometimes I'll combine the two, song structure and chords and lyrics. And sometimes I'll actually separate them out like I did in this track. I think for six and eight for this song, because I'd written, I did the chord progression first and then I did the words um, quite separately. It was okay to do it this way because I'd already recorded the instrumental version. But um, a good question and I should do it better. Now, the other question you had was around how do you organize all this stuff? How do you keep everything together? Well, for me... Oh, I've just closed it now. I originally had <laughs> originally had a better structure. So let's go back to here. Um, you can't really see it very well, but down the side there, I've got like little headings there that say, here's the ones that are released. Here's the ones that are complete. Here's what's in progress. And here's the ideas. And then I just have them in this OneNote, uh, OneNote document. But the problem is I have not kept it. So, so here's Selfish Aware. Here's all the songs that I had for my album, Selfish Aware, and all of those ones. But then I've just got all these that have just, so yeah, basically don't do what I do, which is, well, I have the best of intentions, but I've got a bit of a project on my hands at the moment to actually go back and organize and coordinate all this. So yeah, ideally what I would have is a separate section for my ideas, a separate section for my in progress, separate section for my completed songs, and then be very vigilant about how I actually manage those and put those in different places. So uh, yeah, I, I hope that helps out. But yeah, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it, different things that you can actually uh, incorporate. But uh, 
uh, yeah, hopefully that gives you a few ideas there. Um, Nova Cascade, I hate the loudness war. It just removes all the character. Yeah, so I, I, I tend to agree that uh, it is good to have some what we call dynamic range, which means that, uh, yeah, you have the ability to have louder parts and softer parts because you should. You should have you should have some variation in your music. If your music starts and goes all the way through, then it's no good. And I, I kind of, I almost deliberately, I don't know if it's because I'm stubborn, but I kind of deliberately break the whole loudness war thing. So, for example, the, the bridge in my current song, um, actually not the bridge, but the, bri the bridge kind of changes things up a little bit. I'll just play you a little bit of this now. So here's where it goes to the bridge. <laughs> So this is where it sort of just mellows out and chills for a bit. But then what I like to do, this is a bit of a trademark of mine, but when we go out and I go into my, using my last verse, I like to really strip it back. And when I look at my waveforms, like, you know, what you see, the whole sausage thing, mine dip right down. I'm just like, oh, am I doing something wrong? And then I'm like, no, I want it to be that way. But if you listen to this part, as we come out of the bridge and back into the third verse. Don't spend all of your time so I'm kind of like the, the anti-loudness war um, crusader because I don't think any, I think there's only one song of mine that actually has that whole sausage thing that starts loud and continues loud. And that's, um, I'll try and find it. That's the, the college song I was talking about earlier before. So this isn't the, the Pete plays his songs hour. Um, so I won't, uh, I won't do too much of this. Um, but just to give you an idea of what you can do around this sort of thing. If I go into my album here and where is my college song? There it is. So the opposite of that is if you start like this and then you continue like this. So let's, uh, let's turn the volume back up here. I watched a movie back in 85. The kids were driven far away from home and they were left behind. What is this place? Why is everyone so strange? So I guess it, it, even though I was saying that that's a song where it just starts and goes and goes, well, no, because it kind of does, like, yeah, it is louder in the chorus. And again, there is some variety and variation. So I guess I have obeyed my own rules after all. But uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, Pete's OCD in E minor. <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad to see, I'm glad to see that you're saying that I'm so organized because I feel really disorganized. But uh, yeah, uh, my, my intentions, I think I have intentions of being organized. I think I'm a, a really organized person just trapped in a body of someone who can't really be as organized. Anyway, um, we are getting towards the end of our stream. So as promised, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end off here with five of the tips that I've learned and, and strategies. So these are practical strategies that I've used in recent times that are actually going to help you go away and start writing some songs. And we've touched on some of these as we've gone through the stream, but I just wanted to reiterate these at the end. Mm. And yes, I probably will steal these and release them as a separate video. <laughs> but you guys, you folks here get the uh, get the scoop and get the inside scoop here. Goth Demon 666 hello to you. Uh, one of my best supporters. I love seeing you folks here. And thank you again, everyone who's been here on the live stream. And if you've been here on the replay, I'll, I'll do my one minute of, uh, of finishing off promo stuff at the end. But let's jump in now and look at these five tips. So... What are the five ways that I suggest that you do right now to get better at writing music? And number one is going to be a fun one, hopefully, because it is listen to lots of music. Listen to music of varying styles. Listen to music you love. Listen to music from your past. Listen to music you've never heard before. Listen to music in a genre that you hate. Yeah, I know, that sounds weird, but listen to whatever you can get your hands on and listen to it in the environment where you make your music. So if like me, you've got some monitor speakers here and you've got a studio set up of sorts, well, mine's a everything room, but anyway, if you've got this, listen to music through that system. If you use headphones for most of your mixing and mastering, as I do, listen through your headphones. Get used to what the music you like hearing sounds like in your environment. That's a really big tip. And if you are an instrumentalist, so if you play guitar, if you play piano, if you sing, then play cover songs. So why do you, should you play the cover songs as opposed to just learn them? Well, it's to learn the song structure. You know what? I, I, am I as good a songwriter as um, Freddie Mercury? No. So should I listen to Freddie Mercury's songs? Should I study his song structure and should I learn to play Queen songs? 
Yes, I should. And I do. Because some of those change up, some of those chord progressions, and I'll play a song and, and my wife will always say, that song sounds just like this other song I've heard. And I'm like, I know, isn't it good? And the difference there is that people get a little bit worried and stressed out that my song, if I listen to too much music, my music's going to be so derivative of other music that it's not going to be unique. You know what? Uh, we've been creating music for thousands of years. Unique complete uniquity, uniqueness, has kind of gone. So we've missed the boat on complete uniqueness. So don't stress out too much. Like, yes, there's only a limited number. There's 12 keys in a scale, in a major and minor scale. So, you, you, well, not in the scale, in, you know what I mean, an octave. Um, so yeah, there's not a whole lot you can do. Like, there's been C, F, G, A minor has been used in a thousand songs before. And if you use it, it doesn't mean that you are just being like that person. But you might go, oh, there's a really cool change there. I've, I'm playing a, a song at the moment, uh, Just Haven't Met You Yet, which is a weird song to play. It's a Michael Bublé song. I'm playing it on guitar. But what he does, he does a really cool chord change, which is a whole tone up. And it's a pretty typical thing. A lot of songs did this in the past, where you'd be playing, you'd be playing in C major, and then the whole song jumps to D major for the last chorus. And I'm like, that's a really cool idea. That's something I want to implement in a future song. Does that mean it's going to sound just like the Michael Bublé track or any number of other tracks? Probably not. So yeah, use, and what do they say? That the, the best, the good, good people borrow and great people steal. So uh, that doesn't mean, hey, just steal everyone else's music. But as, as Storm Place was saying, if you want to find a good hook or you've got a good beat and you want to borrow it and put it in a song and play with it, be careful of copyright. Don't go releasing that without proper permissions or, talk about that another day, but for your own creative process, absolutely. Like there, there's no rules. There's no way to do it, but yeah, listen to lots of music, play lots of music, cover your favorite songs. Great way to learn. Number two, and this is probably the funnest one that I do, write a deliberately bad song. So just write a song that you think is going to be terrible. Now, I, I was going to prepare an example here of a really bad song that I wrote, but I don't think I did it. I think I forgot to actually get it here. But I've, I've written some really real shockers of songs. Um, no, I don't have it here with me. Um, I'm, I'm in the middle of organizing all my tracks, so I don't have everything to hand at the moment. But I wrote a song, I've written a few songs that are just terrible. I wrote one called Chickens on Howard Street. Um, I'll, I'll try and play it for you one day, uh, but it's terrible. But I deliberately wanted it to be just fun and terrible. But you know what? There were some cool little hooks in there. There were some cool little melodic ideas in there. Um, goats started out as, you know, I've told the story of this before, but my daughter said, you know, I said, what shall I write a song about? She said goats. And I said, okay, I'll write about goats. Um, and the whole premise of that is goats have it easier than me. And I'm like, well, what a stupid idea for a song. And then I wrote it and now I really like it. So I actually, not that I deliberately wrote that badly, but it was a not a bad idea, but it was a premise that was a bit strange. Same with the college song premise. It's a bit strange. It sounded a bit weird. College, I was like, ah, what happens if I just try and emulate my favorite punk bands and write a punk song? Well, it sounded like that. So yeah, write a bad song can be a super fun way. And coupled with that is writing in a different genre. Write yourself a really bad hip hop song and then just you rap over it. You never have to share it with anyone, but you might get some cool creative ideas. All right. Number three is to write a very short song. So I think it was Jeremy before who was saying, um, how do you take it from riff to finished song? And this can be really daunting for people. They're like, my goodness, I've got to write an intro. I've got to write uh, verses, choruses, bridges, outros, coders, all the rest of it. How the heck do I do all of that and get it all done? Well, the two ways, as I said before, sometimes you just sit down and do it. You grind it out, you get your structure together and then build from there. Or you go, I'm just going to complete a 30 second song. Why not? Complete a 30 second song, complete a 16 bar song. Like just, just write a 16 bar song and accept that that's what you're working on. Because if you finish that, a finished 30 second song, that's like a bit of a practice song is better than 10 unfinished 30 second parts. Does that make sense? If you can go from to completion and if you can finish it, because what you'll do is you'll start looking at mixing, you'll start looking at maybe even mastering, you'll start looking at effects, you'll start looking at all the things that you're going to need to do when you complete a whole song, but you'll just get it done. And I, I watched a bit, so Storm Plays, who's a great supporter, he's got a channel, you should check out his channel, he's doing some great things. Young young dude, getting into music, absolutely love seeing folks do things like this. And he did a video where he, he made a bunch of short songs, he got the new Chromium Fray pack in GarageBand, started making a bunch of short songs, and I'm like, this is great because you're experimenting, you're learning, and then you're getting experience and ideas that could form a complete song. So do that. Write a short song. Number four. Um, this is one that's super fun. And we've done this before over in the GarageBand users Facebook group. Haven't done it for a while. We should probably do it again. But you grab a random loop 
or a random piece of audio and base a song around that. So again, Storm Plays was saying, you know, can you, you, you can grab something from someone else's song and sample it. Absolutely. Or we're in a world where there's so many free loops, so many free sounds. Grab a loop, grab a drum loop, go to freesound.org and download a cool sounding drum loop. Bring it into a project and then build around that sucker. You'd be amazed that, and I think Ian Skeggs before said, you know, you get the blank canvas and you can do whatever you want. That can be a double-edged sword. That can be amazing because it means that you've got 100% freedom to create whatever the heck you want, or it could actually be terrifying because you're saying, I don't have a clue where to start. So if you're in the camp where you're a bit terrified, then just grab a sound. If you're in GarageBand, grab an Apple loop, throw it in there, build a song around, around that. Go to freesound.org, as I said, download a loop, throw it into your project, build a song around that. It's a great way to just have something a bit different that, you know, you've got a structure, you've got something around there, but you can actually build on that and add your creativity to the process and number five, and I've talked about a few communities, but it's to join a community of other songwriters. So I like to think that Studio Live today here is a community where we can chat about this and where we can talk about creating. And folks here on the live stream, folks in the comments, you all support each other. You have great conversations. You help each other out when you have questions about creating music. And of course, you can ask me, but... I'm just one person. I, I got one set of opinions. Like there's, you know, there's in most of these groups, I'm in the, the GarageBand users Facebook group. There's three and a half thousand people here. There's more than 10,000 people here in Studio Live today. Find a group of people where you can have trusted people that you can share your music with and that you can learn and get ideas from. So I recommend, as I said, GarageBand users Facebook group for GarageBand folks. There's a fantastic uh, group that I'm a member of called the Song Spark. Um, group on Facebook. So search for Song Spark on Facebook and check that group out too. If you're a songwriter and you want to join a group of other dedicated, passionate folks learning about songwriting. And yes, the caveat here is that some of the groups, some of the forums, some of the places you go will have a lot of people who are going to be negative, who are going to say that sucks, who are going to say that's terrible. Why do you even bother? You can't use GarageBand to create a song. You can't create a song unless you got $10,000 worth of the latest gear. You can't create a song. If you don't use Pro Tools, you can't create a song. Can't, can't, can't. There are a lot of people who are going to be naysayers. Ignore them. Move away from them. Find a community. Find a group of people that are going to be supportive that are going to focus on what you can do, that are going to give you feedback, not sugarcoat everything. This isn't American Idol syndrome where everyone gets a pat on the back and a participation trophy and we give people false hope. This is, the very fact is that if you are at level X with your songwriting, you can improve to level Y. You may not become the best songwriter in the world. You may not ever produce something that can be a commercial success or whatever it is that, that music is these days, but you can always get better. And whenever I have this discussion where people are like, no, nah, it's a natural talent thing. If you don't have the natural talent, you're simply not ever going to be as good as someone who does. Even if that is true, even if commitment, determination, dedication can't get you to the level that someone with talent can, what's the harm in trying? And why wouldn't you want to be producing? That's why I say, I never say, welcome to Studio Live today where I help you create, record and release the best music. That's, that's never going to be the case. But I can say I can help you create, record and release your best music because everyone has the ability to improve. And if you stop learning, if you stop taking on feedback and if you stop trying to improve your process, only then is when you are going to start degrading and creating less because you're not going to be getting that valuable feedback. So find a community, talk to people. It can be right here in Studio Live today. I've said it before and I get a lot of folks sending me music and I apologize. I'm a bit behind at the moment on emails. I'm spending the rest of the afternoon on emails. So if you have emailed me in the last uh, week or so, I'm sorry, I haven't got to them. But yeah, if you've got a song and you're still not prepared to share it publicly, share it with me first. I'll, I'll let you know. I might not have time to give you you know pages of feedback, but I'll take a listen and I'll say, here's, here's some things that I think are good and here's some things that you can probably work on around your song. So they're the sort of things you can do. Um, but yeah, find yourself a trusted community. Share your music and you will learn and grow from that. All right, we've been gone. Uh, we've gone over time. I always go over time and I apologize for that. But hopefully, again, hopefully you got some value out of this. Hopefully this has helped at least spark. If you come away, I've always said, uh, in my day job, I've, I've had to go to like conferences and things before. And sometimes I go and I go, oh, this is going to be a long conference and blah, blah, blah. But if you, if you get a few nuggets of value that you can then turn into an action, that's what I think you should focus on. So if you come to a live stream like this, if you're watching videos, if you're watching tutorials, don't go, uh, Pete said all these things, now I have to do all these things. But if there's one or two things that resonated with you, 
take those away, implement those in your workflow. Let's say goodbye to the folks that are here um, and because we've got a, a bunch of folks uh, that have been uh, throwing some ideas around here. Uh, so thanks, thanks, thanks. Uh, I'm just having a quick look at what... So Goth Demon 66 says, what if all my songs are terrible, Pete? Uh, well, then keep creating and keep getting feedback. That's the thing. If your songs are terrible and you think they're terrible, but you've never shared them with anyone else, start sharing them with other people. Um, yeah. So do that. Uh, Valium says, Goats is a brilliant song. Thank you. I, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, there's an album called Short Music for Short People. There is 101 tracks, 30 seconds or less, less worth a listen. I agree. I've listened to that um, that album before. It is great. Um, <laughs> Earthling says, if you listen to any of mine, you've heard bad songs. Um, Gino, great show. Thank you. Are we going to see an iSymphonic vid? Yes. So I'm working on iSymphonic at the moment and I have a first look video at that and I'm a bit late to the party, but uh, that's a an app for GarageBand that I'll be looking at soon. Um, so, yes, thank you to everyone. Thank you to Storm Plays, to Ian Skeggs, Goth Demon, Gino Therese. We've got Earthling, Valium, um, lots of other people here that have contributed to Data Drew. Thank you for the super chats uh, there, sir. We've got Nova Cascade, Rob Harley, Mini Hogard, and Cookie Montash, uh, Luke Brash, j -j 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 a lot of other people. I think I've covered most people there. Masato Redine, hello to you. Hello to Darren Bryant. We've had a bunch of people here. Thank you to everyone everyone that was here live. Once again, if you uh, if you were here on the replay, then uh, yeah, leave your comments down below. Hit the like if you did like it. Uh, this is the one minute. I'd say I'll give you an hour worth of valuable content and then I do one minute of, of quick promo. If you head to studiolivetoday.com, you can join my mailing list there. There'll be a little pop-up that will come if you go to studiolivetoday.com and that means you'll keep up to date with all the latest. I've got some uh, weekly newsletter that I've just kicked off there. You'll find out the latest information. You can also go to petejohns.com if you want to listen to my music. You can hear my latest album over there. You can subscribe to the channel as uh, I know most of the folks here live have, but if you haven't already, you can subscribe and that means you'll get notified when my videos come out. And I have videos coming out every day here. If you are looking to buy some merchandise, you can go to studiolivetoday.com slash merch, pick up a cool t-shirt like mine, or you can go to studiolivetoday.com slash gear if you're in the market for some new gear. There you go. That was nice and painless, wasn't it? Uh, thank you again for everyone for watching. Have a great day. Keep creating, keep writing songs, and I'll see you really soon. Cheers.